Here are a few of the best defenses animals have in nature. Number 9. Malaysian Ant Armed with poisonous sacks on their body, Malaysian ants will essentially commit kamikaze in order to protect their colony. Talk about doing what's best for everyone else. These tiny little soldier ants willingly give up their own lives in the cause of protecting their colony from a potential predator. Here's more or less how a scenario might play out. A colony of Malaysian ants are hanging out. And suddenly, a larger insect or small mammal might approach their colony with bad intentions. The Malaysian ant will literally self-destruct, causing themselves to explode, spraying a toxic chemical all over the predator. In most cases, the predator is destroyed along with the exploding ants. Kind of a forest fire being good for the forest type scenario. As their name might suggest, they're native to Malaysia and also parts of Brunei. And as crazy as it seems, they're actually one of several insects in the animal kingdom known for self-destructing. Some termites, for example, are known for deploying a similar battle tactic when danger approaches. Number eight, the horned lizard. The horned lizard just looks pretty mean, but it still has plenty of predators. On any given day, your average horned lizard has hawks, snakes, coyotes, squirrels, and even dogs and cats to contend with. And since they're always outsized, they have to resort to some pretty creative measures when defending themselves. And by creative, I mean shooting streams of blood from their eyeballs. Yeah, these guys actually do that. Now granted, they're not super accurate and shooting blood from their own eyes is typically a last resort. Their preferred method is just keeping still and hoping the danger will just go away. They can also inflate themselves to look like spiky balloons. However, once they're engaged in battle, they won't hesitate to shoot blood in the thick of things. Armed with two muscles around their veins, they cut off blood flow to the heart, flood their eye sockets, and boom! Blood shoots out at their attacker and often freaks them out enough that they'll run away. If someone did that to someone else in real life, they'd probably back down from a fight too. Number 7. The Turkey Vulture Wanna clear out a room real quick at a party? Just vomit everywhere. We've all been at the party where someone had way too much to drink and just puked in the middle of the floor. Maybe we've even been that guy. Well, the turkey vulture uses this concept to their advantage. Only in their case, it's not booze induced. Rather, it's a very effective survival tactic. Found in parts of North and South America, the turkey vulture will literally throw up on anyone or anything trying to mess with it. Not only that, they can spew up to 10 feet. That's just gross. Now let's just take a moment and analyze their diet. Their preferred meal is the meat plucked from rotting carcasses, so roadkill for example is their idea of a 5 star dinner. Sound good yet? Also they obviously don't brush, floss, or use mouthwash. I really don't want to imagine what their breath smells like. When they feel threatened, boom, they throw their food back up and spray their attacker with what I can only believe is a truly smelly combination. Oh yeah, and get this, their vomit is acidic since it's exactly what they need in order to eat rotten meat. If you or I were to eat some rotten meat we found on the side of the highway, all that decomposition would just get us sick. But turkey vultures have so much acid in their bellies that it just breaks it down as they gorge on whatever decomposing meat they get their beaks on. And just in case you're not thoroughly grossed out right now, they also poop on their own feet. They do this in order to stay warm. I wonder if they do this to each other. Number six, frilled lizard. Ah, the frilled lizard. This guy definitely looks like it came out off the set of Jurassic Park. While they don't spit venom or go after bad guys in their cars, they do enjoy intimidating their attackers. Found in Australia in parts of southern New Guinea, these guys are often preyed upon by eagles, dingoes, snakes, owls, and sometimes even bigger lizards. So when frilled lizards find themselves under attack, they stand on their hind legs, open up their yellow mouth wide, and then spread out that crazy looking mane of theirs. Then they start hissing. But as you can imagine, all this is for show, because if their predator calls their bluff and doesn't back off, they'll just turn around and book it to safety for a tree or anything they can climb. I wonder how many times showing off that mane on the neck works. Number five, hagfish. Just the name hagfish sounds sort of gross. Did you know that they're actually one of the most studied creatures in the ocean? This is because they're largely considered to be the ancestor of all living marine vertebrae. So yeah, they're sort of the godfather of fish. However, despite this unofficial status that I just gave them, they're still a frequent target for larger prey, such as sharks, for example. 
However, they have this cool defense strategy that helps them out with that. Video images have shown hagfish using slime from their mouths that clogs their attacker's gills, effectively choking them. The slime is so effective, scientists from the US Navy are looking for ways to make synthetic slime that could protect divers, fend off sharks, and even stop missiles. Hold up, how would slime stop missiles? Hmm, anyways, their slime is kind of like spider silk. There are two protein-based components in hagfish slime, which are tightly coiled threads and a sticky membrane covering called mucin. When the slime is shot out of their mouths, the threads quickly uncoil and the mucin binds to water, releasing the connecting proteins between threads. This allows the slime to quickly expand into a gluey, elastic shield. Okay, I see the whole stopping missiles thing now, I think. Scientists just need to find ways to replicate this ability from hagfish in the lab and mass produce the compounds. Number four, Iberian ribbed newt. If you've ever broken a rib before, then you know it's a painful ordeal. It hurts just to even breathe with a broken rib. But for the Iberian rib newt, well, they probably don't care much about that because they're using their ribs as a defense mechanism. Their ribs are sharp, and when in danger, they'll push their own ribs out of their body to use their ribs as a weapon, piercing their skin in the process. This pretty much sounds like Wolverine except with ribs. Not only are the ribs sharp, they're also covered in toxic skin secretion. According to National Geographic, they thrust their ribs out by rotating them forward until they poke through the skin. And while that sounds rather painful, you gotta do what you gotta do in the wild. It's not always pretty. Newts are able to heal very quickly, so it's not a huge deal to them. Also known as Spanish newts, these guys have been the subject of uh, space experiments. Since the 80s, they've been taken to space about six times. Females can keep fertilized eggs for up to five months, which means they can be inseminated here on Earth and have the babies up in space. I wonder what they're planning. Number three, armadillos and their armor. For pretty much all of human existence, people have protected themselves with armor. It just makes sense. And while human ingenuity is pretty impressive, we can't take all the credit here. Nature came up with it first. The armadillo is a great example. Found in South America and parts of the US, scientists have identified nine armadillo species. While they vary in size, they all sport that characteristic leathery armored skin. This is basically a mixture of bone and a tough tissue coating. And that skin comes in handy as the armadillo is often the target of larger predatory animals. Without much size or sharp teeth going for them, surviving against those guys is a tough task. Thankfully, they have some built-in armor to help out with that. In addition to the good old run and hide tactic, the three banded armadillo can actually fold itself in half and curl up into a ball. This leaves no exposed flesh and this usually leaves the predator looking elsewhere for dinner. Number two, Bombardier beetle. If the Bombardier beetle were a human being, they'd be the equivalent of someone with a bottle of mace. It's got a pretty cool defense mechanism where they're able to spray whatever they want with essentially a super hot liquid. When they're under attack, Bombardier beetles will spray out scalding hot toxic liquid that can seriously mess predators up. Yes, actual boiling hot temperatures. These chemicals are stored in two separate chambers in their abdomen and are deployed through an abdomen tip that rotates a full 270 degrees. They can fire at objects from almost all angles. Pretty dangerous if you ask me. Now, that whole thing I said about the two chambers, that's really important. The chemicals in each chamber, hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide, will more or less detonate an explosion when it's mixed. So keeping those compounds separated until deployed through the tip is crucial. There's at least 500 Bombardier beetle species roaming all over the planet, and they tend to make their homes in woodlands and really anywhere moist enough to hatch eggs. So if you ever see one hanging out, Try not to be on the business end of that tip. Number one, the boxer crab. These tiny little crabs are feisty little guys. You can find them in the coral reefs in the Indo-Pacific region, although you would need to look closely as they only measure less than an inch long. However, that doesn't mean they make prime targets for predators. Quite the contrary. Actually, they team up with sea anemones to help fend off attackers. In exchange for feeding the anemones, boxer crabs employ their help by attaching them to their claws and then jabbing at the would-be prey. This looks silly, but the anemones have rather painful stinging tentacles that can badly injure anyone trying to make a meal of the small crabs. As a reward for their help, the crab will gladly help the anemones collect the and digest food. 
This has to be one of nature's more interesting symbiotic relationships. In the event that there aren't any anemones to buddy up with, boxer crabs will instead find a sea sponge or a coral for similar purposes. How cool is that? Here's what's next. Pod that's just straight nasty and fascinating at the same time. This parasite enters a fish through the gills and then attaches itself to the fish's tongue. The female attaches to the tongue and the male attaches on the gill arches beneath and behind the female. The female then severs the blood vessels in the fish tongue.